Life has a funny way of turning around when you least expect it to. You'd be surprised to hear the stories of some of the most successful people around you who made their way out of extreme life circumstances to be where they are today. From being abandoned as kids, to escaping gang wars, poverty, and abuse, some of the faces you'll see in this video will shock you with their backstory. Not everyone gets things handed to them on a silver platter, so sit tight as we bring you five rags to riches business stories you won't believe are true. Ready to ignite your entrepreneurial spirit? Let's go! Number 5. Starting with Andrew Carnegie Born to a Scottish handloom weaver, this American businessman founded Carnegie Steel, a company that at one point produced more steel than the entire United Kingdom. He was raised in absolute poverty, to the point where he had to sleep to forget the hunger pangs in his stomach, as there was no food at home. He and his family emigrated to the US to avoid famine and starvation. At the age of 13, Andrew Carnegie began working as a bobbin boy at a Pittsburgh cotton plant, changing spools of thread 12 hours a day, 6 days a week. He enjoyed reading the writings of Robert Burns and the biographies of Scottish historical figures like Robert the Bruce, William Wallace, and Rob Roy. His next job was as a telegraph messenger boy. He was a true businessman who worked hard and was soon promoted to operator. The 400-volume personal library of Colonel James Anderson, which he made available to working boys every Saturday night, greatly aided Andrew Carnegie's education and love of reading. He went on to do numerous railroad duties and picked up knowledge about the sector and business in general there. He started making hugely profitable investments in steel and energy firms around this time. All that hard work and knowledge paid off. The Carnegie Steel Corporation became the world's biggest company of its sort by 1889, and he eventually rose to become the richest man on earth. One of the builders of America, he sold Carnegie Steel to J.P. Morgan in 1901 for $480 million and went on to become a philanthropist. He built the Carnegie Institute of Technology in Pittsburgh, which is today known as Carnegie Mellon University donated millions to the New York Public Library, started the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching, and founded the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace. What an inspirational life, from absolute poverty to becoming one of the biggest philanthropists in the USA. Number 4. Next up is Samuel Walton. Do you know the story behind the biggest supermarket chain, Walmart? This American businessman, who amassed a fortune of over $23 billion by transforming a little grocery store into the massive Walmart supermarket empire, grew up during the Great Depression. As was typical at the time, he had a lot of responsibilities to help his family make ends meet financially. He milked the family cow, packaged the extra milk, and delivered it to clients. He would then go on a paper route to deliver Columbia Daily Tribune newspapers. He also offered magazine subscriptions for sale, he did odd jobs throughout college, including waiting tables in return for food. He enlisted in the U.S. Army after receiving his degree during World War II, and after the war ended, at the age of 26, Samuel Walton began running a general merchandise store. He borrowed money to purchase his first store, and before he knew it, his sales volume increased to $225,000 in just three years. On July 2, 1962, a real Walmart opened its doors in Rogers, Arkansas. What follows is history. From 1982 until 1988, according to Forbes, Sam Walton was the wealthiest individual in the country. He owned 1,960 Walmart locations, employed 380,000 people, and had annual sales of nearly $50 billion at the time of his death in 1992. Don't go anywhere, we've got the most famous TV personality coming up next, and you'd never believe the struggles they overcame. Number 3. Now for Oprah Winfrey Oprah was born to a housemaid and a coal miner, so she most certainly didn't grow up in luxury. Things were so bad that she was molested by family members, and living in poverty, she had to wear clothes made of potato sacks. Her life took a turn after landing a job as a newsreader at a local black radio station. There was no turning back for this television personality once she landed her first talk program in Chicago. But wait, it wasn't so simple. The queen of media and the wealthiest African American of the 20th century, Oprah Winfrey, is best known for her multi-award winning talk show, The Oprah Winfrey Show, the highest rated program of its kind in history. She was born into poverty to a young, single mother in rural Mississippi. Later, she was brought up in an area of Milwaukee's inner city, 
She has frequently discussed the difficulties she faced as a child, claiming that at the ages of 9 and 13, she was sexually abused and fled her home as a result of years of abuse. At age 14, she became pregnant, and her infant son passed away tragically. She found a job in radio while still in high school, and at the age of 19, she started co-anchoring the neighborhood evening news. Because of her emotive ad-lib delivery, she was moved to the daytime talk show scene. When her talk show became a nationwide hit, she became a millionaire at the age of 32. From 2004 to 2006, she was recognized as the only black billionaire in the world, and the first black woman to ever be a billionaire on Forbes' global rich list. As of 2014, she has surpassed Meg Whitman, the former CEO of eBay, as the richest self-made woman in America, with a net worth of more than $2.9 billion. Imagine, while she was only a sophomore, her career as a news anchor for CBS is what turned her life around. Winfrey had no idea that she'd go on to have a great career, rising through the ranks of the broadcast business to become the nation's favorite TV personality. Now she continues to rule daytime television, while also serving as the creator and CEO of the multimedia production business Harpo Productions, a best-selling book author and a philanthropist. Number 2. Up next is Larry Ellison. Larry Ellison was born in New York City, but abandoned by his birth mother soon after. His adoptive father was unsupportive and distant, but thankfully his adoptive mother was warm and affectionate and supported him throughout a difficult childhood. He was a gifted but disinterested student, and things got worse after his adopted mother passed away just before he left for the University of Illinois. Later, he spent one term at the University of Chicago, where he learned about computer design for the first time. At the age of 22, he relocated to Northern California in 1966. He invested $2,000 and two partners to launch software development laboratories in 1977. The business changed its name to what we know now as Oracle Systems Corporation in 1982, in honor of their marquee item, the Oracle Database. Ellison currently has stock in Aztec's Pharmaceuticals, Quark Biotechnology Inc., NetSuite, Salesforce.com, and NetSuite.com. He was ranked as the fifth richest person in the world in September 2011, according to the Forbes list of billionaires. With a net worth of around $119.5 billion, Ellison is currently the fourth richest American. Number 1. Coming up, Li ka -shing. In April 2014, this Hong Kong business entrepreneur, investor, and philanthropist was the wealthiest person in Asia, with a net worth of $32.6 billion. But where did it all begin? He was born in China's Guangdong province, and had to leave school before he was 15 to support his family after his father passed away. He worked 16 hours a day at a plastics trade company. After years of hard labor, he went on to create Chiang Kong Industries, his own business. Li offers a lesson in honesty and adaptability from his lowly origins in China as a teacher's son, a refugee, and as a salesman. He was able to create a business empire that encompasses banking, construction, real estate, plastics, cell phones, satellite television, cement production, retail stores, hotels, domestic transportation, airports, electric power, steel production, ports, and shipping through hard work and a reputation for upholding his moral principles. Almost every aspect of Hong Kong life is now covered by Lee's businesses. From power to telecoms, real estate to retail, shipping to the internet. With operations in 55 countries, the Chung Kong Group has over 260,000 employees worldwide. We can bet you didn't know the stories of struggle behind these familiar faces. These inspirational figures turn their lives around from sheer hard work, proving that anyone can make their way up from rags to riches with the right kind of attitude. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.